rendering tutorial, we're going to take a look at a really common feature that is often overlooked or misunderstood. It's called the specular feature. If we look at this simple rendering, we can see several highlights on the surface. Those are called specular highlights. But in the world of modern 3D renderers, the term specularity really is a catch-all phrase that just means reflections. And we're going to talk about what that value means in Blender's render system. If we come down into the user interface here and we look at the term specular, the default is for that to be 0.5. And what I want to do is give you a sense for what these values actually mean in real world terms, because that's going to be able to help you to look at real surfaces in the real world and know how to gauge a value that you should put in here. So let's come over here first and define something. So this is the first thing that we need to understand is that there is a thing called a normal angle, and that is a 90 degree angle to a surface. If we look at this relative to a sphere, you can put a line off any point of that sphere and then measure a 90 degree angle to a tangent line at that point. As far as the specular function goes, there are a couple of concepts that we want to understand here. The first thing is that when light hits a surface, it bounces off that surface. That's exactly why we can see it. It's especially important to understand that for many surfaces, it's not just a simple matter of having a flat shaded surface. For instance, the spheres right here with no specular highlight, with only the rough underlying surface, which we call a diffuse surface, that is represented by base color. In technical terms, base color sets what is called your diffuse component. The specular component is really next important to the base color. My sphere is a representation of the diffuse component, that base color. And if you can imagine sitting on top of that, a kind of a coating that independently reflects light. So when light comes into that surface, some of it is reflected off of that outer coating and the rest of the light traverses down to the underlying diffuse component and then reflects off. So an important characteristic of that underlying base color or diffuse component is that it scatters light pretty much in all directions. But the specular component actually, depending on the roughness, scatters light in a more focused way. And if it happens to scatter it towards our line of sight, or towards the camera, we tend to see that as a specular highlight. So the thing that we want to look at next is something like a transparent material. What's interesting to note, we're seeing through much of the object. Light rays are hitting that and are penetrating it with the exception of a little bit of the light. If you look very carefully, you can see a little bit of reflection. So some of the light coming into this transparent sphere is actually reflecting off of it while most of it is transmitting through it. And that's the key. That, that's the thing that's going to help us determine what this specular component is doing for us. So when we come over here, we can see that a light ray comes in. Much of it transmits through or refracts through, but a little bit of it reflects off of it. So what determines that? It turns out there's a thing called a Fresnel curve. And that Fresnel curve is driven by a thing called an index of refraction. Now, if we come over and we take a look at Blender's user interface right here, we actually see that term IOR in a couple of locations. We see subsurface IOR, and then down here we actually see IOR. That stands for index of refraction. For glass, the index of refraction drives the glass. It drives the degree of refraction, for instance. Importantly, and for what we are wanting to know, is that that index of refraction is also determining how much light reflects off of the glass. And it turns out that the index of refraction also governs materials that are not transparent. And that's the key to understanding what's happening with the specular value. This curve right here is a representation of the Fresnel curve. And what drives it is the index of refraction. And it specifically drives this part of it down here. So this graph goes from 0 to 90, that's the incidence angle, and it goes from 0% reflectivity up to 100% reflectivity. In Blender, that specular component is controlling what's happening right down here, but the entire curve is being expressed on the surface. Whenever you're looking at a surface, you're thinking about two parts. You're thinking about low incidence components and high incidence components. A low incidence component is when you're looking basically from your camera vantage point into the center of an object. 
And when we calculate the intersection of your line of sight to a point on that surface, and then project a line off of that surface that's exactly 90 degrees to that surface, and then measure the angle, that angle is called the incidence angle. And if that is low, you're gonna have a low amount of reflectivity, which is gonna to correspond to this part of the Fresnel curve. The index of refraction is what defines how high or low this part of the curve is. In many 3D renderers, you specify the IOR value to determine low incidence reflection intensity. But the principled BSDF, as developed by Disney, asks the user to simply put in an actual reflectivity value so if you know the IOR for a specific material, you need to look that up to determine its actual reflectivity equivalent. This rendering right here with nice shiny reflections, the low incidence part of the sphere are basically right here. So the specular function in the Blender material system is going to be controlling what's happening down here. And what's happening up here at the high glancing angles is always going to be expressed that way unless the surface becomes very rough. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. As you increase the roughness, light bounces off as an increasingly scattered pattern, as opposed to when the surface has no roughness and it's a perfectly mirror type of surface where we can clearly see the highly reflective sharp reflections. But as you increase roughness, obviously the reflectivity and the specularity becomes more rough. But critically, as far as the Fresnel effect goes, something else very important happens, is that it begins to cause that edge reflectance to attenuate. We can see the higher degree of reflectivity around the high glancing angle parts slowly softens and begins to disappear. But the next thing that we want to talk about is how this Fresnel effect affects metals. Now for metals, the specular function operates in a kind of a different way. What it does is it takes the high incidence values and adjusts the metal's color at high incidence values, but it basically ignores the low incidence values. Let's just take a look at some renderings. This is if I simply took the material with no roughness and my specular is set to zero, and I just set the metal all the way up, we get this sort of gold looking material. But it looks a little bit flat. So if we come over to Blender and we just take a look at that here, this is as if I have no roughness, no specular, and I just take that metal up and that's what you get. But the metal looks a little bit flat. And it turns out the metals do a very interesting thing in reality that's governed by the Fresnel curve. And it changes the reflectance color as your incidence increases. So if we come over here to the specular component, now that we're in metal mode, we take that up to 100. Take a look at the edge of our spheres right there. What happens is, as you get to higher glancing angles, as governed by the Fresnel curve, the color of the metal desaturates. This is a real-world effect, and it happens all over the place when you know to look for it. So it's fascinating. In non-metallic surfaces, this is really what you're controlling over here. And in metal surfaces, the specular component is really controlling how this affects the surface.